Hey, 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 Closet Busters, come on and gather around. It's time once again to kick down those closet doors of life. We're here to escape our BS, explore our fears, and elevate our self-expression. I'm your host, Rick Clemens, Bold Move Expert and Coming Out Coach, and I'm going to take you to the party, the pulpit, the wake, and back to the party of living your life uncloseted. So come on, grab hold of yourself and get ready to step out, step up, and step in to living your truth as we explore more stories, tips, and tricks for living your life uncloseted. Now let's get to the show. Hey, 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 closet dwellers and bold move makers. It is time once again for Life Uncloseted, the podcast. I am your host, Rick Clemens. And I got to tell you, sometimes once you start making those big, bold moves, they just keep coming and coming and coming. Now, here's the truth. You kind of get the blueprint of it and you do it and you go, okay, I can do this all the time. But it doesn't mean it's going to be a piece of cake or that you're just going to be able to dance and sing your way through life doing your bold moves. But you might just be one of those people who is dancing and singing your way through life to make the bold moves. And that's why I brought back a guest that we've already had on. He is definitely singing and songwriting and dancing and acting and doing music videos and living big, bold, and outside of that closet in his life. And I'm so excited to have him back. He's got some great stuff going on in his life. His name is Davis Mallory. And I'm going to just kind of shut up because I want to get him on here. I want to start talking about where he's been. But he is like, to me, one of the epitomes of going and making the moves, living your bold life, and continuing to live your life uncloseted. Welcome back to the podcast, man. It's been probably, what, a good year since we chatted the last time? Yeah, I think it's just been about an exact year. So thank I you think very it much. Too. Yeah. So well, I'm so excited. You have been doing so much cool stuff. I know that you've got some new music coming out. In fact, you're going to be releasing something in just the next few days. Um, Sun and Moon, we're going to talk about that. But you've been making some headway in just some really cool spaces. I know in the last month you went and worked on a panel in LA, right? Yeah, exactly. I went to LA for um, Out Web Fest part of Reverie TV, which is an LGBT on-demand network, and they have a, a kind of a film festival for music videos and films with LGBT themes, That's and awesome. they selected my music video uh, with French DJ Loic Tanello. We did mm-hmm. a song called Dance With Me, and they chose it as one of, I think, only five music videos that were, were shown at the festival. That's awesome, man. That's so cool. So what I'm just curious. I don't think we got into this last time, but... Um, what do you enjoy doing most these days? Is it the music videos? Is it the music? Is it the songwriting? What is the thing that really like, if you could do it all day long, what would you do? It's interesting you ask that question because I sing a lot. So I think mm-hmm. that's what comes most naturally and kind of drives this whole career. Music videos are kind of stressful. They're fun to do, but there's so much planning into them. And then the day of, it's like hurtling cattle when it comes to bringing people on set and everyone doing a different job so i almost find them to be kind of draining and when they're over Mm -hmm. i'm happy they're done and then singing on stage has this added thrill but also i get nervous before i go on stage Mm -hmm. and i kind of am still kind of working through my comfortability with performing live yeah so i think the writing process is probably the most stress-free part of the whole thing so i probably like that the, the most well, I, I would think, too, that, um, you know, Davis, it probably comes from a space kind of like kind of like me as a speaker. I love, you know, coming up with the speeches and working through. In fact, I'm working on a new speech right now. And, and I'm not Mr. Like, OK, here's the speech. Let's memorize. I'm more of let's get the concept of it, which I know is different than songwriting because you got to get the words down. And then you got to put it to music and then you do start to memorize. I do memorize a little bit, but I love I love the creation of the speech. I love that part because that's where I get to be like in my head and thinking about, okay, how do I want this to roll? How do I want it to land with an audience? And it's probably very similar for you as you're writing songs. You're, you're kind of digging into that deeper part of yourself or into memories or things that are hitting you. And then it's just flow. It could be challenging too, I'm sure. But I'm hearing you say it's kind of flow for you. You can really just flow with it. Yeah. It's just a, kind of just a random flow of thoughts. Mm-hmm. I'll, someone will give me an instrumental and I'll sing complimentary melodies and whatever lyrics come to my brain. Just kind of easy. Um, that's the fun part. <laughs> that's yeah, what yeah. the work. Yeah. 
But I hear you too about being on set because I, I, I've interviewed a few other singers. Um, Brandon Stansill was another one I interviewed in the last year, and he kind of talked about that too. It's like, yeah, the music video is really cool when it's like when it's done, <laughs> and you can sit there and go, okay, there it is. Look, it looks really cool, but man, it's just chaotic kind of chaotic because there's so many people there's so much stuff going on and then on top of that you got to do the thing you do and be creative and look cool as a cucumber all that sort of stuff is happening simultaneous is that kind of what yeah. happens for you too yeah exactly the one for the sun and moon we had two people from the press come and interview me during the filming and i had five or six dancers and a makeup artist there was a lot of people on set. Me, I felt like I was getting pulled in so many different directions. It was, and I felt like I have to play host to a lot of people. Like you're hosting a party, but I'm also having to perform. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of uh, hard to do. Yeah. So what's driving a lot of the creativity these days? Is it coming from a certain space? Is it certain things going on in your life or things that you're seeing around the world? What's really driving some of the lyrics and stuff that's coming? into well, your vocabulary of music last year when i put out my very first album loud it, i would i'd been dating a guy for three years and mm -hmm. we'd broken up around the release so some of the songs right. were sad some of them were sort of like me starting to date again new people and kind of feeling feelings for different people in my most recent life like the last six months i've been writing a lot of music and it's it's not super love inspired it's more happy my lyrics i i feel like my lyrics are getting better and my even my writing style is getting better um and each of the songs i have written that i'm about to release out are but they're not really about a certain person anymore because i've been trying to stay single for the last year and i've pretty much successfully have um so that i can focus on myself and try mm -hmm. to take my career to where i want it to go so there, there's still times like I have a song coming out in the next year that's going to be called Downtown, mm -hmm. and it's just I wrote a story about when I was DJing and a guy asked me to play some songs throughout the night for him, and um, every time I took his request and I played it, he got really excited, and then he would come over to me and ask me for another song, and then at the very end of the night, I saw him when I was closing down. He invited me home with him, so I thought he was gay, and when I got to his hotel, found out he was straight. And then didn't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. And then he ended up like doing cocaine and passing out. And I was like, okay, this is weird. I'm going to leave. So I messaged him the next day and I was like, hey, thanks for inviting me over. By the way, are you gay? And he said, no, dude, I'm straight. And I was like, okay, I just took it the wrong way. Like, right. well, anyway, so, you know, love to stay friends with you. But then he just, he really just didn't message me back. So I was like, all right, that was. He, I, I have a feeling he's probably gay. He just isn't comfortable with it yet. Mm -hmm. But um, I wrote this song that was kind of about that night. And the lyrics are like, quit playing games. Um, quit saying things to me you don't mean. You know it's true. Mm -hmm. Tonight I'm going downtown. And it's kind of like an anthem to just that mm -hmm. experience. Um, mm -hmm. And then the song The Sun and Moon is actually about, I was, the day before I wrote The Sun and Moon, I'd been working with a very cute Danish music producer for three days i was in the studio with him all day every day for three days and i started developing a crush on him uh -huh. i also couldn't quite tell if he was gay he had a lot of feminine mannerisms but he was european so that's kind of <laughs> they're hard right. to read right and then the next day i went to sweden and having had this kind of like crush on him i wrote a song called the sun and moon that was about him and this crush that i i'm really bad when i like a guy and i don't know if they're gay uh, telling them that I think they're cute because if I know they're gay, it's like easy. But if I don't know they're gay, then it's really hard for me to talk about it. Mm. Um, so those are the kind of things that my music has been about lately, but it's different songs about different things, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm curious because you just brought this up and it's something that I find so interesting. Why do you think it's so hard for men? Okay, it doesn't matter gay or straight, but <laughs> because you and I are both gay. I'm going to go that direction. Why do you think it's so hard for us as just men, take the gay piece out of it, to acknowledge each other as handsome or good looking? Why do you think yeah, we struggle with this? You know, I, I actually had this encounter while I was in Amsterdam where this guy that I had um, found really handsome and had become close friends with, and I was living in Amsterdam for two months. On my very last week in Europe, he seemed sad that I was leaving. 
And so I asked him to come over to my house and watch a movie. And he put on a gay movie. And as I was watching this gay movie with him, I was like, okay, this is his ability to come out to me. So when we went to say goodbye, instead of just hugging him goodbye, I kissed him on the lips and he kissed me back. And then he told me that I was the very first guy he'd ever kissed in his life. Mm. And it made me wonder if this something, this kind of reaction has gone on before with me and other men. And they just haven't been able to have the bravery to do it because they can't admit that they find other men attractive. Um, and then he quickly called things off with me when I got back to America and said he wasn't ready to be out. Mm. Um, but it, it had made me think about the fact that we as men are not really comfortable with our attraction to other men. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I see I it in my, I see it in my straight friends a lot, you know, cause I, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that I, I will, you know, kind of flirt with them just to like, just to bug them, you know, and there's those that they just flirt right back. And I know there's totally nothing going to happen. One of my buddies calls me sexy Buddha cause I'm a big guy. And, and he, I always tell him how much of a man crush I have on him. And that's the only reason we're friends is cause I have a man crush on, you know, we do that whole banter, but I find it so interesting and maybe because I'm doing a lot of work with men and their masculinity these days, and especially in a me too world, you know, that now that we have the whole me too movement going on, I find just so called to do this work right now that if we could be comfortable enough in who we are as men, take the sexuality piece out of it. But if we could be comfortable enough in who we are as men, how different we might be as a planet with men being able to say, hey, you're kind of a good-looking guy, or you're hot, or you're a stud, or whatever. Now, I know jokingly guys will do that, but it's almost like the locker room talk. You know, you're a stud is the same as, hello, so did you, you know, did you get a piece of ass, you know? And I, I, I just feel like there's this space right now, this calling, especially through the creative um, industries, to help men start to push those boundaries and start to come forward and say a whole different kind of me too, so to speak, that... Yeah, I'd like to be much more open with my with my male friends and say, wow, I really admire you or I really find you attractive. No sex involved. I just find you an attractive man. And I remember I said this to one of my friends a few a couple of months ago. I said, you know, I want you to know I find you really attractive as a man. And I know you're straight. I'm just saying I want you to know I find you attractive because I think you're a beautiful man. And he didn't know what to do with that. <laughs> I mean... It took him a day or two to get there, but he didn't really know what to do with it. So I think the sort of stuff you're kind of, I'm going to say dabbling in, so to speak, but you, you kind of indicate, you know, the, I seem to do this with these guys. It may be just an interesting space that this is not only through your music and stuff, but this may be part of what you're called to this planet to do to kind of, you know, toy and awaken guys to, okay, maybe this is who I'm supposed to be don't know but it just as you were talking i thought that's kind of an interesting thing that you keep you know seeming to do with men yeah it is interesting um does it make you yeah. feel weird when you find out that they're not so open to it or do you just kind of go okay well that that was just the experience and you move on um i mean i think that it i hate to say it this way but because i'm a good looking guy that it happens to me somewhat frequently where I'll either be someone's first experience with a guy or, mm -hmm. you know, I've had guys that have thought they were straight fool around with me. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is uncomfortable because my last boyfriend, the reason we broke up is because I was his very first boyfriend mm -hmm. and he never wanted to come out and he still hasn't come out mm -hmm. and I didn't want to date people in the closet again. Yeah. So I have tried not to, um, go after that. Mm -hmm. kind of a person anymore as a part of, as far as like a, a love so I'm, partner. I'm so glad you brought this up. Not that I want to go into this whole therapeutic thing, but you keep bringing these things up. I'm like, okay, this is a topic we haven't really talked about in a while. So it is a struggle. And I know I was, I was one of those guys who dated somebody and they were my first guy. It is such a struggle to be somebody's first guy. It yeah. is. And I don't pe think people get that, especially people who are coming out and, you know, you know, my work, it's a lot of, a lot of it still is coming out people late in life doing that. And then they latch onto somebody. So what were some of the, what are, you know, without going into a whole lot of detail, what was some of the challenge for you being that person's first? 
I mean, I wanted to hold hands in public and I wanted to introduce them to all of my friends as my love interest mm-hmm. and they were uncomfortable with both. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had to either be like, well, you're a valuable person to me and like, I really love who you are. And to be honest, I still am in love with that ex-boyfriend of mine in some ways. I still think about him. So I had to kind of just sacrifice what I wanted in a relationship to have this person in my life. And that was hard. And then in the very end, he broke things off with me. And I still stayed in love with him for a lot longer than he was. Um, and to this day, we haven't even spoken in about a year. And I talked to him uh, or, like this year. I wrote him an email and he didn't write back. So it was not easy for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is interesting to hear you say, because I know everybody makes sacrifices you know, to be with someone, but the way you said it, you know, the sacrifices to be in, you know, have him in my life. It's, it's something that you kind of wake up to at some point. If you, if you're really awaking to it, <laughs> some people never wake up to it. They're like, okay, I'm, I'm sacrificing this. I'm sacrificing that, but I'm going to stay in this. And you awaken to it. And I think that's something that's very beautiful. Because when you do awaken to this, even though, you know, he broke it off, when you, it sounds like you have woken up to this, that this is not what I need to be doing. It's yeah. just, it's not where you need to be. Yeah. And those life lessons are some of the hardest we learn, but they're also the thing that gives us the most strength to move on and to kind yeah. of break the patterns. You know, I went through... Right after I came out, I went through kind of a pattern of dating guys, like the typical not available. You know, they were either not available because they didn't like the idea of, you know, me having an ex-wife and kids, or they didn't like the idea that my time was really focused on my kids as well as them, or they didn't like it that there was no chance in hell I was moving away from Southern California because that's where my wife and ex-wife and kids were. There was always, okay, I like you, but I can't be available to you the way I want to. And then I finally said, this isn't going to work. I can't keep going after these guys no matter who they are. I've got to find the guy that's like, okay, well, I'm willing to make some sacrifices. And I yeah. needed to be willing to make some sacrifices too, you know? And I think that's the interesting space when we go through these life lessons like you've done and you start to wake up to this and go, okay, this isn't a good fit and this isn't good for me. Yeah, exactly. So this sort of stuff, do you find that it gives you the inspiration creatively, not just in the songwriting? Is there stuff that starts to show up in the way the music videos get produced and the design element, or is mostly just in the songwriting that you start to take these life lessons and overlay them into the creative part of your life? Well, I mean, when it comes to the music video for that song I described to you about that guy that had Mm -hmm. been kind of giving me just weird signals and was very drunk and I think was possibly homosexual, just couldn't deal with it. Um, I'm going to actually make a music video that basically just recreates that night. Yep. So, um, and then it, I don't really have other music videos on the table right now that are um, really about life experiences other than that one. But mm-hmm. I do tend to uh, kind of pair video with storytelling. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I just, like I said, I finished the sun and moon and I wanted to, in the music video for sun and moon there to be some element of the fact that the song is about a male love interest right. um because to my own like fault i haven't really put out a bold music video yet that shows myself as gay even though i'm comfortable with doing that i just haven't mm-hmm. done it so i'm trying to go further in that direction with my videos um and for the sun and moon it doesn't really have a very strong gay storyline mm-hmm but I do have a guy that is used as just a sort of direct visual to the fact that the song is about my attraction right. to men. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so as, a, as a singer and a songwriter, as a you know, gay singer songwriter, is there a gay lesbian, I don't even maybe transgender singer songwriter that is kind of like your muse, the person who inspires you or is it somebody else? in the music industry that really drives you forward. Well, it's interesting you said that because um, just very recently I had the opportunity to meet Justin Tranner, who is 
very well known for writing Justin Bieber's song Sorry and Selena Gomez's song Bad Liar and he's written songs by Britney Spears and Katy Perry and he's someone I greatly admire and he turned out to be super delightful he's like really smart he's an activist for a lot of causes and he well it was he was someone that I've looked up to and you know a lot of times you meet people you look up to and they're not nice or they have an mm-hmm. ego but he, he was neither he was really nice and um really friendly um so he was someone that I, he is someone I look up to as far as like an LGBT mm-hmm. advocate and writer songwriter so what 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 about him inspires you i'm always curious when people say that i mean i think i my music is very mainstream pop and like his music is <laughs> even light years ahead of that it's like mm-hmm. he's had number one songs right, right um he's a gay man and he's he's out and he's loud and he's proud about his sexuality and his mm-hmm. he says that he's gender non-conforming mm-hmm. and he's um, he's a, I don't know. I just think he's cool. Mm-hmm. Someone I certainly look up to and, um, would like I think to it's have interesting this. when we can find those people because, you know, it's not only a guidepost, so to speak. It's, it's not just somebody we go, Oh yeah, they're kind of like someone I admire and I, and could, I wish they were a mentor. It's really that person that, that I look to, you know, to, to give me a spark on those days when I'm just like, I hate this. I don't want to be doing this anymore. And then I, I will go and I will step into those people who most inspire me. Even if I've never had a conversation with them or met them, I go and I step into it and go, but this is, this is why you're doing this because you have the spark. You have the person that you go, I aspire. I don't like to use the term aspire to be like them, but I, I aspire to do the kind of things that they have done to contribute to the planet. You know, I don't think I want to be like anybody. I want to be me, but I yeah. also want to take what I've seen in certain people and go, yes, that's it. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the person I want to be, you know, I want to be doing things that has that kind of impact in the world. And I think it's great when an artist will share, Oh well, yeah. You know, most of you, Oh yeah. You know, this was my influence and I get the influence piece, but, I, I really like to look for, okay, where's that person? And I'm sure a lot of people, unless you're in the industry, you've probably never heard of him. You may have if you're really deep into, okay, who are the songwriters behind the big, you know, the big names? But to hear somebody that I, I'd never heard of him until you said that, but then as you started listening off the songs, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I know those songs. So, uh, so yeah. that's very cool. So I also found it really powerful when you said you've chosen – to be single for the last year. Was that a tough choice? Yeah. I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest. It's, it was hard because I think I was addicted. You know, I, I've been trying to work through my addictions in the last year because I, one of the reasons that, and I'll talk openly about it, that my ex-boyfriend and I had our like final end is that I punched him in the face when I was drunk, but I was also dealing with a lot of pent up aggression towards him and resentment towards him. And, um, I've become sober over a year now from alcohol, which also relates to all other drugs too. I never really was a drug user, but I, uh, have definitely tried things and I'm completely sober as of January 29th. Awesome. That also played itself into just a relationship addiction and sex addiction that I was also trying to become, uh, to sort of like deal with second to, um, to alcohol. And, um, you know, it was really easy to get on the dating apps and try to replace my boyfriend with someone else. Mm-hmm. I just didn't really feel like that was healthy for me as I was trying to uh, deal with alcohol. Mm-hmm. So I have yeah, kind of just fought off dating. Um, I did date a guy. Actually, we, we just broke up about uh, two weeks ago, but we only dated for about three weeks. And I told him um, I just didn't feel like, a a, we were even meant to be together. I just didn't feel like we were very compatible. Mm-hmm. Um, and B, I was starting to feel some of the same sort of aggressive nature that I felt towards my ex, towards him. And I didn't like that. And it made me feel like I need to stay single longer and still sort of work through. Because I think it's hard for two men to date because mm-hmm. men are usually the head of the household and they're, you know, they're competitive and they're leaders and 
when it, and for me i'm i'm a strong male so when someone starts to tell me what to do i don't like it and so when i start to date a man and then they start to be bossy with me or critical towards me like it it strikes out this sort of aggressive nature i don't really want to feel so i felt like when i was dating this certain guy when he would do things that felt like he was nagging or being critical towards me i just was it was like the same thing i felt for my ex i was starting to feel for him and i was like okay i still don't want to be dating anybody right now just want, i actually am happier alone i think that's a beautiful i hate it when i say i think because i use that a lot but as i'm sitting here thinking through what you're saying it's a beautiful self-awareness and yeah. it isn't easy and especially and i love all my gay brothers even those that are listening, I know, even though I've never met you, I love you for listening. I also love you because I think our struggle, I hate to use this phrase, but the struggle is real. The struggle is real to try to date men. So, of course, you know, I could just, I just opened the door to all the right wing Christians will go, see, we told you. No, the struggle is real to date anybody. But yeah. when you have the masculine energy and the masculine energy, which I, I personally believe is a natural thing that happens is there is... To me, homosexuality is as natural as heterosexuality. They're just, they're just, this is just the way it is. But there's a challenge when it's definitely masculine. And a lot of people say, well, but what about the guys that are really effeminate? I'm like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> there's still the masculine energy to masculine energy happening here, folks. Because yeah. there are women who have a lot of masculine energy too. And I have been in a lot of friendships with those kind of women. And I like feel that same thing. I feel the aggression. I feel the like need to be in control, all that sort of stuff. And for you to be able to be so dialed into what you see is a beautiful thing because so many people don't dial into that. And then they keep going back. They keep doing the same thing. They keep dating the same kind of people. They keep having the same kind of relationships. They may come off of whatever addiction wagon they're on, and then they go, why can't I get this right? When the simplest thing is, wake up. Be awake yeah. and see what's happening yeah. for you. You know. So what's been the biggest struggle then? You've gone through a whole lot of stuff in the last year. You've had some good you know, breaks and some success. Had a breakup, come through your addiction. Where's the biggest struggle been? Um, I feel like lately it's like someone asked me yesterday if I could have anything in the world, what would um, I have? And I would, I would just say that I would want to have more of my career fulfilled for me. Lately, I've just been wanting to find a good artist manager. I want to dabble in acting, but in a role that would involve me singing. And I would like for a song to actually break through of mine and actually, you know, get on the radio and, and sort of help me become the artist that I want to be. So a lot of the, the struggle right now is just sort of still chasing the dream. Mm -hmm. And in, in a lot of ways, I'm thankful for the success that I have had because I have had success. Like I think I told you, uh, I've had seven songs of mine signed to record yeah. labels on Sony, Sony and Warner, which is a really great feeling. Um, hardly any of them have paid any money. And um, they haven't really resulted in a lot of performing the way I would like to be touring and performing although i am right. playing several gay, gay prides this year yeah, yeah, yeah. but um i think that's just still this i still am trying to be come fulfilled in my career mm -hmm. so career fulfillment is a biggie for many people i'm curious yeah. what would what would fulfillment really look like for you would it be yeah, a, like I mean, a, a full gig a tour would it be a man in your life. I mean, it's so, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of in coach mode right now, but I just, I love ask, answering or asking that question of people because I think the more we can hear what other people's perspectives is of fulfillment, the easier it becomes to start to define it for ourselves if you're struggling with that. Yeah. I mean, as much as I would love to be in a relationship with someone, I just don't really want to be in one just to be in one. Mm -hmm. And so I'm being incredibly picky about people when I go on dates or if I, if the, you know, if something, you know, like I, I just happen to, go, I'm not really trying to date people is what I'm trying to backtrack and say, but when people enter into my world sporadically, you know, I'm just being really wise about, well, this actually work out. So I don't want to just wind up in something, um, again. And then, um, yeah, career fulfillment is sort of the biggest 
goal. And I guess someone else asked me or when I was having the same 